up, y'all? It's me. It's your boy. Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Games Internal. and welcome back to Beyond Home and today we are going to Anger, which is a moon of fury and you might see there's a little bit of a theme with the names there. Definitely not intentional at all. Anyway, we have a rocket with approximately 9,800 Delta V. That should be enough. We landed on Scathe last time and that was heavier than what Anger's going to be, but Anger's also a moon. So there's going to be a couple of transfers involved and that's not going to be the most fun to do. So we'll see how the mission goes. It's just Jeb again. I, I want to set up a communications network at some point. But, uh, that requires effort. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. It's not. It's not the most fun thing to do. I'll probably do that off camera when, like, when I've got some spare time. Also, why is any res open? Okay. Anyway, I'll probably do that probably off camera at some point when I've got some spare time, and I'll set it up because there's not much to really show with that. But anyway, I have made a couple of changes to Beyond Home in the past couple of days, which is why this video is a little bit late. I've been working on some stuff. Um. First of all, the most obvious thing is the skybox. I said last episode that it's going to be changing, and it has. Um, it's it's changed, and you'll see it soon. And I've completely messed up my gravity turns. This is going to look really bad. But um, if you've ever played Elite Dangerous before, you will be familiar with the skybox because it is taken from Elite Dangerous. Uh, KSP Fanatic took some pictures and stitched them all together. Then I, I just did a couple of fixes. And uh, because Beyond Home was made basically inspired by Elite Dangerous planets, which you might think isn't the most impressive because quite a lot of the planets on Elite Dangerous are very samey, but I wanted to go for that sort of style. Not the samey style, the Elite Dangerous style, which is why they look as they do, really. I mean, if you... you might see the similarity, you, you, you might not, in which case, I don't know, but that's 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 the, uh, the style I was going for. Anyway, we'll get to orbit, and I'll show off the skybox a little bit more. Anyway, we are in Orbit of Rogue now, and here we go, here is the skybox in all of its glory. It's not completely done, I want to add in some nebula, just so it actually looks like I did some work on it. <laughs> but uh, there it is, you got, you got the galaxy there, and this is taken, for, if you do play Elite Dangerous, this is basically just taken from inside Sol somewhere, uh, judging by the look of it and how familiar it is, because I never go outside of Sol, so it looks the same to me. Which is which is kind of why I recognise. I can't see any of the the other nebula. I think that's Barnard's loop over there. I don't know, but though the, that's a little thing for the people who play Elite. If not, enjoy the skybox. I I prefer it over the old one. The old one was kind of like I wouldn't say it was like a placeholder because I did like it at the time, but it got old. <laughs> it didn't age very well. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, it's time to do some time warping and plot our transfer window to Fury. Alright, so we have just done a little bit of time warping. Uh, we should should be able to transfer to Fury now. So, as you can see, there's Fury. It's very, very close to the stars. Um, I'm not sure how the temperature is going to handle, but we should be alright. I haven't had problems near Fury before. Uh, please let me adjust this maneuver now, thank you. I've not had problems going to Fury before, but you, you know, there's a first time for everything, so we'll we'll probably have to wait and see how we get on. Really, it shouldn't be that much of a transfer. You can see around there, but that involves an encounter with something else. Yeah, that looks like maybe a Lua or an Ash encounter there. There we go. There's our encounter. 1,400 meters per second later. <laughs> That's not so good. <laughs> oh no, that's a perfect move node as well. Right, I do have the I do have the delta V in this stage, and I do have five thousand delta V after this stage, but that is slightly worrying. Um, we are only going to anger, thankfully. But that is a slightly worryingly big maneuver to do. So getting back from Fury should be a little bit easier because we don't have to do it from low Fury orbit, but. Fury is heavier than road, I think. I think it's about... I think it's more than 1G. I'm just going to check now. Fury, what are you? 1.03 Gs. Road is... Is it just classed as 1? 0.78. So it is... It's a fair bit heavier. <laughs> it's a fair bit heavier. <laughs> oh, no. Alright, so the burn is in approximately 55 seconds. 
Um, everything's looking good. I mean, we're pointing straight down at the moment. It should even out a little bit. So we are in quite a high orbit uh, around road compared to what we normally are. So we should be all right. We shouldn't hit the atmosphere. Now nah, that looks like we'll be fine. Anyway, the atmosphere only ramps up at about 30,000 anyway. So if we, if we skim the top, it doesn't really matter. I don't think we're going to skim the atmosphere at all, though. I think we'll be fine. Anyway, yeah, it is just Jeb on this mission. I really do need to sort out the communications network. Uh, there is one craft up there at the moment, I think from like episode 3 or 4. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just sitting there doing absolutely nothing at all. And there we go. I really, I really wish there was a fix for this. <laughs> like, I really do. <laughs> Why is my craft so dark? <laughs> Where's the light gone? <laughs> Is Lure up there? No? I don't know. My craft is dark for, the, for some reason. Anyway. 0.4. I'm going to have to burn that 0.4 one time. I'm actually going to have to do that. And we're off! Here we go. We are away. So first of all, we're going to try and fix the inclination because I always find that that's the worst one to try and do. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's the wrong way. Every single time. That's the wrong way. But yeah, you can see how close we're going to be to the stars. Like the, the difference in light on the planet would be immense. That's if it actually worked. I think Blackrock is fo uh, is working on something like that at the moment. Just a little teaser there. Can't guarantee when it's going to be done because like it's completely new. But I'm I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, now we need to fix the like the direction that we're going to be orbiting in because we're going to be coming at completely the wrong way. Yeah, at some point I do want to send a probe down to Fury. Uh, it's just a beautiful planet. I, I really do like it. And uh, fun fact, I don't know whether I mentioned this in the last episode, but uh, I have added EVE configurations for, uh, for the planets in Beyond Home for when you don't have Scatterer installed. So if your graphics card doesn't like you, and you want to run scatter and you want to have scatter like effects you can with this new simple trick <laughs> no it's it's just um it's just like eve glows so there's nothing special but it does kind of look the same i might show some screenshots i don't know you can just find them on the forum thread so really i don't i don't need to put them in the video but i might do you know what just to get some more views we'll uh we'll walk over to this this bit instead and it's our favourite time, time warping. All right, here we go. We are pretty much on track. I'm going to do a little bit of science. I'm just going to talk to you all about just Fury in general. So it's a massive planet. Um, I need to set my camera to auto. There we go. It is a massive planet, and I feel like it's the planet, apart from Gateway, that really does give you a massive sense of scale you can see the stars right there and if you zoom out they're actually quite far away uh, a little bit more on that later for the moment I need to do some science I also want to send a rover to scathe and um, that's that's gonna be a while because I need the communications network if I don't I have to send a crew a crewed mission there I don't really want to do that because there's not a high chance that they'll be coming back <laughs> Now it would be a much better sense of scale if Fury's atmosphere was actually visible, which at the moment it kind of isn't. But uh, it's slow down time, and um, we—you can see—we are traveling very, 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 very quickly across across Fury. It'll just help if I actually turn my engines up to do this. But I am burning, 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 and barely anything's happening. So getting getting off out of fury is going to be a challenge i don't know anyone who has done a return mission from fury yet i may be wrong there may be a couple of people who have but personally i've not seen one before and it's it's a challenge it's basically the eve of beyond home now get uh, getting a, a crewed mission to fury and back is probably possible uh, it doesn't have an, an oxygen atmosphere, but it is probably possible because it is lighter than Eve and its atmosphere is a little bit more forgiving as well. But it's still something that I wouldn't advise people to do. Anyway, I, I did make this lander stage slightly inefficient. And it looks like we might actually run out of Delta V on this mission, so we've got a rescue. Look at that base, it was still not in an orbit. 
and you're still not, we're still escaping fury. Wow. <laughs> that is... A lot more Delta V I'm having to burn than I would have liked. So we've crossed the 5,000 mark, so we're past halfway. And we haven't even landed yet. <laughs> and there, there's the sense of scale you get. There is Fury. An absolutely gorgeous planet. And with the new skybox, it just looks amazing. Right, we are at the Apoapsis, and it's time to raise our Periapsis a little bit. I, I really do have a feeling we're not going to make this. Uh, we, we might, we're definitely going to be able to land. But 4,000 meters per second is not happening. Anyway, so let's raise that area up just a little bit. See, can you see how slow that's going? If we were to get an escape trajectory from here, worryingly, a lot of delta V. And there we are. Oh, okay, we're going to get an encounter. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so some stats about anger. Let's, let's have a look at anger then. Because if we're going to get home... We need to decide now whether we're going to land on it, or whether we're going to just fly past it. So, it has 0.3 Gs, and it's only 29 kilometers across. It is a very small planet. It's about a tenth of the size of Lua. It's small. So, I feel like we might be able to land here. So there's our periapsis there. Now we're going to go anti-normal to make sure that we might go down, but I don't have the most confidence. I don't know how fast it spins. It's not rotating that quickly. Here we are, this is anger. Look at that, 500 meters per second. And we basically have to burn all the way now. Ah, we're going to be going past it, oh well. We'll be landing on a mountain instead. Not what I intended, but that looks like what's going to happen. Luckily, it is a low gravity planet, so it should be fairly forgiving with how we land. So now we are 34 meters per second, and we need to switch on to surface so that we don't quite die. This is probably the most suicide of a burn I have done. Alright, so it's looking like we might make it. That, that's if we don't bounce and tip over. Please don't tip. Please do not tip. Yeah, I know it wants to. Please don't tip. <laughs> Why is this so bouncy? <laughs> that was so close. You guys saw that. That was close to tipping. That was, that was the closest to tipping I've seen a craft come. Then again, he had the one on Armstrong a couple of episodes ago, which was almost the same. But here we are. Here we are on, uh, on anger. Um, I didn't have time to do any science. <laughs> oh, Lord. We're going to plant a flag. I think we're able to use our RCS jetpack because it's only 0.3, but I, I really don't want to chance it. I am going to, but I really don't want to. I'm going to quick save before I get out anyway, so we'll, we'll have something to go back to either way. Might go over to one of the rocks. Just Give it a bit of a nudge, you know, a mineral sample. I actually can't remember whether I added this to the sample list. <clears throat> the list of rocks to sample. It, it's just contained in one file. Uh, this is a learning experience for us both. Right, can we? We can, whoa. Three science, hell yeah. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> Playing on 20% is hard. I might increase that to like half of a surface sample maybe. Because I don't want all of the rocks to be surface sample level. Because that, that's just going to really break the science economy. But there's furies. Massive. <laughs> We're going to see if we can time warp to get a better look of it. Ah oh, yes, there we go, there we go. Beautiful. I think anger is tidally locked. Anyway, it's time to be gone from anger. We've done most of the science. We've not quite done all of the science that we could, but we've done all of the major science. And there's no way to transmit it back either, so when, when the time comes, if we have to rescue this craft, it's going to be a challenge, to say the least. You know, we're on exactly the equator, so I'm just going to burn 90, which is that way. 
and away from anger we go. I'm really happy with how the terrain actually looks. I actually put a normal map on it for once, which makes it look slightly 3D. It looks actually decent for once. Uh, terrain textures was something I was never very good at, and then at the end of GPO and at the beginning of Beyond Home, that's when I started focusing on it. And then now, I'm doing another pass of them on Beyond Home, so they should look a little bit better. And hopefully not as flat. You know, you notice I'm keeping really, really close, as close as I can, actually, to fury, not fury, to Angus' surface. Just to save some fuel. Someone in the in the last video was saying that they really liked this two-stage lander, and I'm like, thank you! I know I said that as if I was going to say a but, but no, thank you very much. I'm not very good at designing landers, so I really appreciate that. Uh, oh god, I walked way too quick. I really hope we can make it back. It, based on the numbers, it looks like we will be able to, and it looks like we'll have a fair bit to spare, but again, it's, it's, it's accounting for errors. Alright, here we are, we have just arrived at the road, we just missed a couple of corrections. We're going to be landing in the night side, unfortunately. Wait, no, I can turn this around, it's fine. We have enough Delta V to do it, we could just turn the orbit the other way around. But here we are, we've arrived back in the road system. And we're going to be landing near the pops again, actually. Now, I need to slow down just before, because I've, I've remembered. Oh, and then I ended up slowing down in the atmosphere and wasting a lot of my uh, potential Delta V. I, I'm really happy with the visuals, by the way. You might have might have noticed I'm really happy with how things have turned out, especially with how they look, like the cloud details, the mountains, the scattering, everything like that. And it's now available for people who don't use scatterer, like the Eve effects, are as accurate as I could get them to what they look like with scatterer. And uh, I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out. Anyway, let's just hope the parachute works. Let's turn this down to around, I think it's 600 I normally use. We, if, if, I, if, I, if I didn't slow down there, the heat shield might have burnt out and we might have died. So that was a very close mission in terms of how efficient it was. And I really don't want to go back to Fury. <laughs> We might do in a later episode when we have more efficient engines and just better technology in general, such as like the really large lifting engines. But for the moment, no. Let's see what science we can get then. So we can probably get some more science experiments, I think? Ah, it's electronics that gives us some more science stuff, and it's only one thing there. And I think we get another experiment sometime later, I'm not quite sure where. Suggest in the comments what you want me to get and whether I should save up for, say, one of these, because I, I can afford these. Uh, should I save up for one of these ones, or should I get one of these ones, and if so, which one should I get? Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Beyond Home, that was a really, really close mission. Uh, hopefully the next mission is a little bit less stressful than that one, that one was really close in terms of fuel. So uh, thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that, remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Yeah. <laughs>